Good morning, fellow residents, Colonial Beach. Hope you're having a great day. I'm doing this uh, video editorial just because I think there's a lot of things to talk about and I don't want to, you know, take me multiple pages to be able to write up what I'm going to talk about. Um, tomorrow night, we've got a town council meeting that's going on that's pretty important. Uh, I wish I could be there. I have a commitment that keeps me from being there. Uh, I look forward to seeing it on YouTube. I specifically look forward to seeing the interaction between the town council on the resolutions that'll be coming up because it will kind of give me an idea on where I might want to vote in November and see who is fiscally conservative and who uh, isn't. And I'm not saying voting for or against. That's not where I'm at here. I'm who's going to ask the right questions and uh, let's see what's going on here. So the first thing that I did was I took a look at the agenda and on the agenda, we've got a thing called the linear park or resolution 2122. Now, with the, with the linear park, they're looking to get a grant for $200,000, as well as fund it with $50,000 uh, matching money from the town. Now, that could be as little as $25,000, okay, because they're looking for a second grant that's going to come from Virginia Outdoors Foundation uh, that they may get uh, that'll take up half of that $50,000. So, fine and dandy. Linear Park. Now, the real reason behind this, from what I understand from talking to people in the know around the town, is they want to upgrade the golf cart trails. Well, that's fine. I agree with upgrading the golf cart trails and putting some lights out there and stuff like that. But the linear park part of it, I don't, you know, I don't need some, you know, uh, botanical garden uh, coming up here on this side of town. I live about uh, 300 yards from the golf cart trail, so I'm pretty familiar with it, and I go on it from time to time. Truth in advertising, I don't own a golf cart, so we'll put it there. I think in the long run, though, we've got to find out a way for golf cart trails to be self-sustaining. Um, and that's a question that could be put up for debate, and I'm certain that there's smart people out there that can come up with some ideas as far as fees go with registration and inspections as far as golf carts go that could help offset the maintenance as far as the golf cart trails and put us in good shape overall so that we don't have to go through this thing about trying to find another grant because we're a bunch of grant-eating people uh, here in the town. Okay, now, what we really do need on the north side is a regular park, a real park, a park that has size enough to where you can do some organized sports and stuff, not just a little kiddie park that's a quarter acre. You need something to where kids can get out and run and do stuff like that, and I've been advocating for that for over four years. Back when Eddie was in office and all that stuff, I've been bringing it up, and Eddie actually said one time, Dunt, we're not going to spend one more penny on the point until we get some things going up on the park, be on the north side, because the north side deserves it. So that's it. That's going to be uh, Resolution 2122. Now, Resolution 2222, Virginia Housing Capacity and Building Grant, uh, we're going out after that uh, because it's going to give us some training as far as... Uh, as far as the people that uh, deal with housing as far as the town goes. I'm all for it. That's fine. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit later as far as, as far as grants go and what I really think about them in the long run and sustainability. But here's the thing. The best thing that you can do as far as houses go in the town of Colonial Beach is cut those taxes. Okay? I have a couple that I was showing houses the other day. Okay? They made a decision not to buy in Colonial Beach. They bought in, they're buying in Dahlgren. Um, and the reason for that is, is they didn't like the county as well as the town tax together being at that dollar forty plus uh, number when they can go over to King George and pay a less amount of money. And the house is just a little bit more as far as its appraisal and uh, as far as the price of the house goes. So... The best thing you can do as far as housing goes in this town is cut the taxes and that'll also help people bring in as far as jobs, as far as jobs and stuff like that go, cutting taxes. Okay, you're going to vote on the budget and on the budget, one of the things that's going to come up there is the tax rate based on the appraisals that were done here months ago. Now, I saw in the, the slides that it's around 12 to 13% as far as the median goes for uh, the increase as far as taxes, uh, as far as the appraisals go. I've seen some of them that are up to 40% different, so that just puts that out there. 
So right now, town council wants to set at 78 cents. Okay, 78 cents. Uh, please don't advertise that town council as a tax decrease because in fact, it's a tax increase. Okay, more money, uh, more money in your coffers. I would suggest that if uh, you took a look at the budget and you did some cutting, uh, you'd be able to make, you'd be able to take that down to 75 or 76 cents as far as the tax rate goes. Now, I see the town manager in the brief, as well as the mayor on a video that I saw on Facebook the other day, talks about a mandate being held on the school. And that's the reason that we've got to raise the price of taxes and we have to be at that 78 cents. That's not true. I cannot find anywhere that, th that there has been an actual mandate put out there that says that there has to be a 5% pay raise as far as teachers go. I, I, if I'm wrong, I, I'm great with that, but I don't think that I am. So I just really don't think that the mandate exists. Now, why am I pushing that? Okay, let me tell you why. 78 cents versus 75 cents or 76 cents. Each one of those points is around $60,000. Now, that doesn't mean much probably. You know, I, I'm still working, so I can afford to kind of, you know, pay higher prices. But right now, when we're dealing with inflation the way that it is, the price of gas the way it is, think about this. If you are retired, and let's say that you're 70 or 80 years old, and you're living here and maybe your spouse has passed away, and you live in a house that's 300 and 300,000 to $350,000. That's eight to eight to nine hundred dollars more a year out of your pocket or around $75 a month. Now, as we get older, I know I take a lot of prescription drugs and stuff because I've got heart issues. That costs a lot of money as far as co-pays and stuff like that goes. And older people are on limited incomes. We know that. So we need to be out there advocating for people in our community that need the help the most. And that 78 cents down to 75 or 76 cents may not seem like a lot to everybody else, but it seems like something that we could do to help our fellow neighbors. Uh, now that brings up another question, and this is going to be the big part. And I know I'm going to get slammed on this and I've, you know, you've already keyed my truck. You put a dead cat in my, in my, uh, in my, uh, in my mailbox back on the election when the last mayor election was up, all that stuff. You've hollered at me at the parking lot and, and, and food line. And I've taken a lot of heat for coming out and talking about local politics. But here's the deal. The school, okay? The school is eating up 30% of the budget this year, okay? 30% of the budget. And when you combine that with the police force, that's 47% of the budget. And then we take and take a look at the and look at the budget a little further. The NGOs and stuff like that are in there for another 15%. So those three things right there are eating up more than half of the budget. That does not sound fiscally sound to me. I believe that it may be time to take an honest look at do we want to keep Colonial Beach School and have that albatross around our neck and put this town into bankruptcy in the long run. Think about that. That's something that really needs to be looked at. And we always go, drifter pride, all this stuff. Well, fiscal conservatism, if you take a look at that, in reality... The school district down in Westmoreland and the school district up here are basically rated the same. If you go look on the national websites and stuff, some of them are B, some of them are C's, you know, stuff like that. But they're basically rated the same. So the education would be the same. You could save as much as a million dollars a year. And I'd be and I, and I know people are going to come out. No, it's not going to be a million dollars a year. Well, yeah, it probably could be a million dollars a year in savings that you could do if you shut down one of the schools. Uh, council needs to do an objective look at why we don't join those Westmoreland school district. And as I said, the school and the police, as well as the NGOs, as far as the budget goes, you can look at that pie chart. It's eating, eating up over 50, 50%. Got to look at that, folks. That's fiscal conservatism. That gives us a lot of money to do other things with. A million dollars a year. Okay, then they're going to talk about this open space resolution which is back to Eleanor Park. Oh, yeah, boy, Eleanor Park never seems to go away. Resolution 2422. It's a declaration of open space. Okay, so the grant that they got as far as Eleanor Park goes back, I don't know, nine months ago, whatever, um, to uh, turn Eleanor Park to put conserva uh, con uh, conservatorship on Eleanor Park 
And FACT has to have another thing done before uh, they're going to be able to get their money and stuff. And that happens to be, uh, they have to declare it as open space. And that has to be done as far as the town goes. Grant requires open space declaration to receive the Virginia Land uh, Conservation Foundation grant. I feel this needs to be voted on by the full council, okay? Because if you look at the agenda, it rolls from a declaration into a resolution. I don't think this can be done by just one signature by the mayor. Uh, and by looking at state statute, that's, that's where I get my information from as far as I don't think that it can be done in that way uh, because it affects as far as how the title can be used and all those types of things as far as the deed goes. And I think that the full town council needs to vote on it. Now, grants. If you look, if you look at our capital improvement programs list, which talks for, you know, the next five years out or so, as far as what we're going to do, we're expecting more than 50% of the capital improvement plan to be made up of grants. 57% of it is the numbers from Davenport. Um, now, grants, you may see that as free money. It's not free money, okay? Your income taxes, my income taxes, we send it to the Commonwealth or the state, and we send it to the federal government. So if we get a federal grant or a state grant back, guess what you just did? You sent it to the federal government, you sent it to the state government, they're going to chew up a portion of it as far as feeding their bureaucracy, as far as the money goes, so now you're getting a grant. So that's like giving yourself a loan and taking off 15 to 20% right off the top because the bureaucracy ate that money up. And that's before you even see dollar one. So, and all these matching funds that are going out there as well, those have to be looked at very closely because those come out of pocket as well. Now I'm gonna go back to the school for a second, okay? I said you could save about a million dollars a year if you combine the school. Okay, CIP right now, they wanna fund $5.9 million over the next few years with grants. If you combine that school and took that million dollars a year that you're saving from there, fiscal conservatism, and put it into what you need to fund as far as the town goes, you wouldn't need to go for the grants. You wouldn't need to have that because that money would already be in there. Now, I would suggest, too, that you'll see that 80 cents, 78 cents, 76 cents, 75 cents if the school goes away. You can see that probably drop almost 10 percent after the schools are combined to help you as far as the taxes go. And the police, they're taking up a lot of money. That's something that's got to get looked into. Now, I'm all for law enforcement, all that type of stuff. And I think that we need to fund them what they need to be funded. But that just seems to be a high number to me. Uh, the other thing is, is you guys have seen that we have things happen around the town that we never get answers to. I'd suggest Chief Deaver, we'd love to see like a weekly or every two weeks, we'd like to see a summary of what's going on as far as the town goes. How many arrests did we make? What are we doing around the town as far as the police go? Things like that. Uh, the other thing is, is I also, from a from attack, from a, uh, from just a, a regular safety point of view, we need four or five cameras around this town because like uh, the, the, the restaurant the other day that got their signs stolen and stuff, if you had some well-placed cameras around town, this would not be, you know, hey, who did it? Or please bring them back type of deal. We'd know who did it, and we'd be able to take care of the problem right off the bat. So I think that I've probably said enough. I ran on here about 15 minutes, stuff like that. I know that, you know, I get bashed a lot as far as, you know, uh, as far as my views go, as far as politics goes. But the one thing that you can't say is that I don't care. I care about Colonial Beach. I do like living here. I just like some things to be more conservative as far as how the money's spent in our budgets and stuff. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening and have a great day.